Hello there, welcome back. This is part three of the Mega Filter build and in this episode I'm going to be starting work on the brush chamber which is right at the back, up a height there, in the dark. But before we get started today I just want to address a few questions that came up after the last episode when I installed these Vortex filters. I did answer them at the time but people kept continuing to ask the same question over and over again. So. I thought if I address it in this video, it'll save them asking the same question over and over again, again. Right, there was a few things. The first one is, why are you building the Vortex units so high off the ground? Well, because this whole system, once the pump actually pumps into it, is going to flow via gravity through all the different containers and then ultimately back out to the pond. Therefore, they need to be the highest thing. I did also get asked about why I'm not making this system a gravity system. That's because I've got nowhere that's level with the pond or slightly below the pond to install a gravity system. So it has to be pump fed. The higher that these things are, the more head of water there's going to be to drive the water out of the drain to the distant parts of my garden that I want to water with the nutritious mucky water including my lawn, the borders and possibly a vegetable garden. If I have these set down the water is just going to dribble out. It's not going to come out fast so that's probably the major reason just for the ease of draining and the watering of the rest of the garden. Because that's going to be a big thing. I want to actually water and feed the garden from the waste water that comes out of my pond. Another question was why are you using the vortex units in tandem as opposed to in sequence? The questions weren't actually asked like that but essentially in sequence would be if the water went into one vortex then into another then into another. That would be sequence. I've actually got them set up in tandem so the water goes through and it goes through all three together and then out. Well to be honest, it really doesn't matter whether they're in sequence or in tandem. The pump is going to be probably a 30 or 40,000 litre an hour pump, which is going to provide ample flow for all three vortex units, whether it goes through them one at a time or all together. And another thing relating to the vortex units was why are you putting brushes in there? The brushes don't necessarily have to be in there. I've got that option if I do want to put brushes in there to slow the flow down and really use that as proper primary settlement to catch as much muck as possible but I'm actually going to initially run them without brushes in there just as bare vortex units to spin the water and hopefully settle the stuff out before it goes into the main brush chamber which we're going to be concentrating on in this video. I really should have written these questions down because I can't remember any more but there definitely was more. Yes, there was one with regard to the fittings that I put on the bottom of the vortex units for the drains. Ooh, that was a big lad. That was them. In the UK we know them as tank connectors. I think in the US you call them bulkhead fittings. I'm not sure. Um, we don't call them that, but I think it's a similar thing to what you guys use. I had it so that this two and a half inch or two inch outlet was on the outside of whatever I was fitting it to, whether it was going to be a bottom drain for this or a bottom drain for the vortex. With the locker nut on the inside and the rubber washer on the outside. So from the inside I would tighten it up, it would pull the outside and the rubber washer in and it would lock it tight and make it watertight. Well really it doesn't matter which way around you put these things but for neatness it looks nicer if you're not seeing the screw thread. So traditionally in the UK and in the rest of Europe, the neat side would be on the outside and then you could fit a pipe inside it or if you want a really big pipe you could put it on the outside of it. You don't really have that option if you've got your screw thread there. A few people also said why didn't you put the washer on the nut side? Well that's because when I was tightening it, it would kink the rubber washer. The rubber washer needs to be on the opposite side to what the nut is. Ultimately, whichever way around you put these things, it's going to create a watertight seal. And you're going to be able to get a pipe fitted on the inside. So some people are getting really head up about that. It doesn't matter, you know. 
think plumbers would tend to put the nut side on the outside. People making pond filters would tend to put the nut on the inside. But it doesn't matter. And as far as I can remember, they were the main questions that kept getting asked repeatedly on the last episode. So hopefully that's answered them. Because um, I know a lot of people, when I actually answer a question, they don't seem to look at it because there's no acknowledgement that I've actually answered the question for them. It's, it's a really weird thing. So I'm maybe just going to have to start answering questions in subsequent videos from now on so people actually see what I'm saying, you know. Let's get on with this episode. We'll dive into the brush chamber. Okay, now we're in the back of the filter, looking out towards the pond. There's our vortexes. These are the outlets coming out the vortex, and this pipe here will run all the way into there. And this is going to be our brush chamber. So what we need to do now is drill that out. Unfortunately, I don't have a big enough hole saw that'll cut it in one piece. So I'm going to have to go through with an ordinary drill and just basically cut it out with the side of the drill. So we're going to drill that hole out there. And that's the fitting that we're going to put on there. This bit is going to go on the inside. This bit is going to go on the outside. And the wall of our container is going to go between there. We've got some sealant to go on the inside of there, so that'll go on the inside of our tank. Now this bit will come off, but then it'll be screwed back on, on the outside of our tank. Tight. Creating a watertight seal. Allowing our pipe to go in here. Feed through into the tank, and then down to the bottom of this tank. And I'll show you what will happen there in a bit. Now hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on here. I'm basically just forcing this down as I'm drilling and cutting this out. It isn't going to be perfect, but it's going to be nigh enough. Okay, so that's the hole dug. No, it's not dug. <laughs> well, I suppose I did dig it out with a drill. That's the hole cut. <laughs> so used to saying that's the hole dug from my pond building days. That is what we're putting on. And you might think that hole isn't perfect. As I said, it doesn't have to be because we've got that all the way around as a margin of error. Our hole could be all over the place and it wouldn't really matter. As long as there was plenty of sealant between these two, it would be okay. So I'll get these unscrewed, fit this on the outside, push this onto the inside, hopefully marry up the holes, and we'll screw it together. I do have some sealant as well, which I'll show you now. Now the first choice for a tool to cut that big hole would have been a hole saw, similar to the one that I used for the two inch outlets on the drains of the vortex units. Second best choice probably would have been a jigsaw but that would have meant dragging that big container out um, and actually having a jigsaw and then just cutting it out. You've still got a reasonable scope for a balls up with a jigsaw as well because you've got a flat blade and it generally doesn't want to go around in circles especially a tight one like that. So we did okay with a drill. And now what am I looking for? Why did I come out here? This is the problem with having short-term memory loss. Sealant. That's what we're using there. It's basically just an aquarium sealant. Any sort of decent quality silicon meant for water use. Gutter sealant would be another good one. I actually used to use that quite a lot on ponds. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper than so-called aquatic sealants. It's the sort of stuff you would use for sealing holes in plastic gutters. Uh, joining bits of gutter pipe together. It's really good. It stays flexible. You can actually use it when conditions are damp So that's one I would definitely recommend if I can find a link to the one I used to use I'll put it in the video description But in this video we're using that which is an aquarium sealant. It works on glass works on plastic it's Put it on Squash that bit on the inside creates a waterproof seal and then we'll screw our outside to our inside So the water can't get out 
And on the subject of sealant, I may as well just quickly show you what I'm going to be using to join the solvent pipe together. And that's that. That is solvent cement. You've got to use it in a well-ventilated area because it smells fantastic. Oh, no, better not. I'm not going to smell that again. I'll end up with my back. It's good stuff. It basically melts the two bits of plastic together and within a few seconds it's stuck. You just cannot get it off. You've got to cut it or smash it. Good stuff. I'm just going to screw that onto there. And then this back piece is going to go on the inside and hopefully the holes will marry up and I'll be able to screw that on there and fix it. And before anybody asks me, it can go on that way if you want it to. It doesn't really matter. It's going to have loads of sealant in there so it's going to be sealed whether the sealant's on the outside or whether it's on the inside. Okay, I've got two choices. I can either cover this in the silicon or I can cover the inside of the tube in the silicon. It's probably going to be easier if I just hold this here and try and silicon it in front of the camera. Yeah, instead of bringing the camera in here with me because that's going to be very, very tight. Right, now this is a bit of an awkward angle so you'll have to forgive me if I make a balls of it. This is awful. I really need this on a flat surface and then standing above it. But you get the idea. <laughs> oh, it looks terrible. But it's going to do a job. <laughs> I'm sure a drunken monkey could do a better job than that. Horrendous. But it's going to work. Right, I've placed that on the inside. I'll put some weight against it and tighten these fellas up. Right, that's good. As I was tightening that up, I could hear the silicon going. And it's starting to come out along the sides here. So that means that the two sides are very tight together. Our pipe that's coming in from the vortexes is going to come to about here so it's in effect coming through this and that's going to be stuck in there with that solvent glue so that is going nowhere when it gets permanently fixed okay and then on the inside of here we've got a bit, little bit going in there and then we've got a 90 degree bend and then to complete that part of the fitting we've got a longish bit of pipe there which comes to about maybe two inches off the bottom so our water coming in is going to go right down the bottom of here spread out we're going to have a perforated raised basin here all the way in here and then we're going to have brushes above that so the water is going to come out and this is going to act as another settlement chamber under here brushes are going to prevent anything from rising up they're going to catch it all and then the water is going to come through various points here and drop down into our moving bed part which is going to be down there oh, yeah, man. Look at that. I'll just give you a look at what I'm standing on here this is not like level. This all needs digging out and leveling out. I'm trying to climb around on this bank side and sliding around all over the place. Remember this joint is flexible, which allows us to bend this in because from here to here isn't 90 degrees. It's probably nearer 100, 105 degrees. Okay, now before I put this in here, I just want to say that I've actually replaced the screws. I've put longer screws in here to get a much better hold. The ordinary little screws were only just say getting a hold of here and if I bump the inside of here I don't want this to fall apart hence using the much bigger screws. This will really pull it together. These fittings here are really meant for pond liner 
this is a little bit thick without the improved screws. Yeah, that is solid. You can probably see there that the silicon has squashed out a hell of a lot more. So really that needed the bigger screws in there. Right, so that's our pipe going into our brush chamber. We obviously still need to um, stick that in properly with the solvent glue, but at least I can see where we are now. That is exactly how it's going to be. Well, Angus, don't fall in there because they've got a bit of water in the bottom. Get out. That's our vortex units feeding out along here to our brush unit. And I'll put proper hangers in here at some point. Okay, so in that brush chamber, obviously it's going to be full of brushes, but I don't want the brushes to go all the way to the floor of that chamber because the muck that comes in is going to be swilling around in the bottom. I want it to be able to flow around unimpeded. So I'm going to make a false floor out of these, which are filter grids. And like the other stuff, I'll put links to it in the video description. Basically, what I'm going to do is cut little legs out of two inch pipe, drill holes around here, and cable tie the legs onto there. I think I might just have four or five. That's the brushes I'm using. I'd better see how far the brush comes up when it's sitting on there, and that'll dictate the length of the legs. I'll be back in a minute. It's actually about three and a half to four inches, which is about 10 centimeters. That will ensure that only the top of the brush is above the surface. Obviously, it can all be below the surface, but we want it coming up to the surface, possibly a little bit above the surface. And that will ensure that the whole brush is doing work. It's all attracting muck and holding it. And then when we come to swill it down, all the muck is going to come into our free part and away out the bottom, out to the drain or more accurately out to my lawn because it is going to be used to feed and water the lawn. Okay, so I'll use a chop saw to cut these, drill them, have a quick video of me attaching one and then I'll get the rest made up off camera. Okay, so around the top of here, I'm just going to drill, I don't know, three holes, cable tie this to here. I'm going to have one on each corner and one in the middle. That will be any amount because it's not really holding any weight. The brushes weigh practically nothing and they're in water. And I'm drilling the holes about you, half an inch or maybe even quarter of an inch from the top. Three. There you go. There you go, one leg. And if I wanted to be neat, I could trim these little ends off. In this situation, it's not gonna matter. So I'm just gonna leave those on. As long as the leg's secure, it's all good. Okay, that's our first one. So I need to make another three of these to properly cover the base create our false floor and then I'll cut the pipe that feeds in from the top because at the minute it goes right near the bottom I might as well have it just terminating here as opposed to cutting a hole out here and slotting it through here um, because I might need to remove these at some point and I don't want to start pulling things to bits and undoing pipes if it just pours onto here the water's still gonna hit the bottom we've only got four inches and then it's gonna spread out settle out any remaining crap in the bottom before rising up through all our brushes. And at this point, I just want to say that a lot of you might think that the methods I'm using are pretty old school, you know, using brushes and so on instead of a series of drums for this big pond. But I want to create a filter that can be replicated by people on a budget. There's no point me going out and spending tens of thousands 
on all the latest gear if it's only going to be replicated by 0.001% of the people who are actually going to watch the videos. You know, this is the sort of thing that can easily be built by you using any sort of containers that you can beg, borrow, or well, not steal, you can beg, borrow, or get for a good price. That's basically what I've done. I've basically built up all of these parts of this mega filter over about five years, and now I'm to the point where I'm putting it together. So it hasn't cost me a lot of money. And if you want to replicate something like this, possibly on a smaller scale, it won't cost you a lot of money either. And that's the real driving force behind me doing it like I'm doing. I mean, most of the filter media I'm going to use in here is Alpha Grog. It isn't the best filter media. We are going to use some of the bio home in the showers. But for the most part, for a little bit of settlement and something that works in muck and something that's got a good external surface area, the Alpha Grog is cheap as anything and it does a cracking job. So that's what we're going to be covering in about three videos time. But for this video, we're working on the brush chamber. So let's get back to it. Okay, so that is two of our trays in here. There you go. And I've cut the downcomer pipe down a little bit. So now it, it's still, still gonna fire down to the bottom there. It's gonna go through there. And this underneath here is gonna be our dead zone. And above here is gonna be our brushes. I don't know whether you can see, but the, the bottom of this isn't particularly level because we've got a little bit of a kink in here. But when it gets filled with water, that'll go flat. Okay, so that's it. So now we've just got to get a spirit level on here to ensure that we're drilling level holes across here. And I think we might have one, two, maybe just have four two inch outlets on here. And they'll drop into our moving bed. That should give plenty of flow. And then I'll cut a hole in here and put a bottom drain on. So we're going to use the same fittings as we used in the last video. The ones that we used on the bottom of the Vortex filters for our drains. They're a two inch fitting. So I just need to drill two inch holes, level along here, get the fittings on, and then I can just put the pipes on. It's going to be really simple. Now unfortunately it's so dark under here, I cannot really see the vovel. So we're just using the same hole saws we used in the last video. I think this is classed as a two and a half inch one. That's going to enable us to get our two inch fittings on here. I'm actually going to go with five outlets instead of four because thinking about it, there is going to be a canny bit of flow because we're using a 30,000 litre an hour pump. Obviously, if five still isn't enough, we can add more. That's not a problem because they're easy to fit. So I'm going to go with one in the middle, one on each end, and then just split the difference. That goes through the hole from the outside. We can slot a bit of pipe in there and take that down to our moving bed. And on the inside of the tank, that's our lock and nut, which locks everything in position. Remember, if you want to use it the other way around, be my guest, it doesn't matter. As long as it creates a watertight seal, it's all good. I prefer having this bit on the outside because if you want to fix something to the outside of there or the inside of there, you can. If you've got it that way, you don't really have that option. Okay, so that's all our outlets on there. Just see through to our inlet, going in the back corner there with a few brushes. We've got our false floor in. Now all we need to do is fill that up with brushes, fix some outlet pipes to here, 
it'll just be two inch pipes. So we'll have a straight bit, an elbow, and then a down comer, firing down into here, into our moving bed. And I've put a bottom drain on as well to enable us to drain all the muck easily out of the bottom. Okay guys, that's it for this episode. It doesn't look it on the viewfinder there, but it's practically dark out here now. So I'm gonna go inside, have a good curry. I've got one cooking away in the oven there, can't wait. And in the next episode, we'll be concentrating on the moving bed part of this filter. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please share it wherever you want. And I'll see you next time.